Welcome back. In this episode, we'll be looking at technique for playing suspended cymbal, and later on, we'll look at technique for playing tambourine and triangle. So let's start with our suspended cymbal. The cymbal is mounted on a cymbal stand, and I play the suspended cymbal with yarn-covered mallets. Now, the general playing area for suspended cymbal will be near the edges of the cymbal. And typically in music, you'll find the suspended cymbal part as a single stroke roll, meaning you'll play right hand, left hand, right hand, alternating. Now notice that my single stroke roll wasn't too fast and it wasn't too slow. Here's an example of a single stroke roll on the edges played too fast. I really got too loud too fast with the with a fast roll. Now a slow roll. I really heard each individual hand when I played a very slow single stroke roll. So somewhere right in between is just right. Most suspended cymbal parts will have a crescendo with the roll, so you have to keep in mind not to get too loud too fast. There's really nowhere to go once you get to that certain volume level, so make sure you save the majority of the volume for near the end of the crescendo. Some other things to keep in mind when getting the best sound out of the suspended cymbal is the stand itself. So you want to make sure the cymbal stand that you're using has a plastic sleeve. So this supports the base of the cymbal as well as the sides of the cymbal stand so that you don't have a metal cymbal against a metal stand. You want to try to eliminate any extraneous noise. I have a felt washer that lays on top of the base, and my cymbal, cymbal sits right on top of the felt washer. I have a second felt washer that goes on top of the cymbal, and then I have a wing nut to keep everything in place. Those are the basics for playing technique of suspended cymbal and some things to keep in mind when you're playing suspended cymbal. Now let's move on to tambourine and triangle technique. A concert tambourine is a small wooden shell with a batter head on top, surrounded by silver or maybe bronze jingles that go around the side. There might be two rows of jingles, or there might be one row of jingles. You can also play a headless tambourine such as this, but the playing area will be just a little bit different. With the left hand, you want to hold the shell of the tambourine from the back, and your right hand will play the rhythms with your fingertips. On a tambourine with a batter head, you want to play near the edge of the head, and on a headless tambourine such as this, you want to strike the instrument on the top of the shell. Now there are rhythms and single notes that you can find in tambourine music. Other times the music will call for a roll. A roll is executed by first striking the edge of the tambourine with your right hand, followed by a shake with your left hand, and then it ends with another strike of your right hand. So when you put that together, you have this. And you'll shake the tambourine depending on the length of the note. Now notice that I'm playing the tambourine horizontally. You don't want to play the tambourine vertically because then the jingles will have too much ring to them. The preferred method is to play the tambourine horizontally so that the jingles mute each other from gravity. Again, it's helpful to have a surface such as a towel or a soft surface to lay the tambourine down after play so that you don't make any extraneous noise. You might have heard jokes about someone less musically skilled having the triangle solo in the band. But actually, nothing could be further from the truth. Playing the triangle actually involves a fair amount of finesse and accuracy. There are two ways you can play the triangle. You'll usually find the triangle suspended from a very thin nylon cable and a clip such as this. The triangle can be clipped to a music stand when playing, or the triangle can be handheld. 
if possible, play the triangle handheld so that you can get a better height and better accuracy from the instrument. Holding the triangle higher, about chin level, will help the triangle sound to reach the audience. The triangle is played with specific triangle beaters. There's different sizes and weights. This is about a medium size and weight. The triangle beater is held between the first finger and the thumb with no back fingers in contact. The normal playing area of the triangle is on the bottom side. When the music calls for a roll on the triangle, you want to play the roll between the bottom side and the closed side. Muffling the triangle is done using your fingers and the side of your hand, and you slowly and gradually add pressure to the triangle to stop the resonance. Unless called for, you never want to muffle the triangle suddenly. As with many other percussion instruments, dynamic levels that are written for triangle depend on how far you are away from the instrument with the beater. The louder the dynamic level that I need to play a note on the triangle, the more space I'll have between the beater and the triangle. Here's piano. Mezzo forte. And forte. Again, having a towel on the surface of a table is helpful for setting the triangle down. You can also clip the triangle to a music stand if needed. That covers technique for triangle, tambourine, and suspended cymbal performance. Again, thank you for watching.